Hey everybody and welcome into another video. My name is Ty. Thanks for clicking on this one. We're going to talk about some black metal today. If you like that type of stuff, hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below. Why do I have terrible taste? Why do I have great taste? Let me know some albums that I missed or what do you think about these albums? Like I said, comment down below and let me know. If you're new here, we talk about music, all types of music and rock adjacent music usually and i did a top 10 albums of 2023 list which you can check out which covers uh many different genres prog metal hard rock black metal so there is some crossover here some of these albums i will talk about did make their way onto that uh top 10 list so there is some uh crossover like i said so if you want to get the rest of my albums that i enjoyed outside of black metal check out my top 10 albums of 2020 three black metal is a genre that i try to keep up with as best as possible uh, it's probably my favorite modern still going i guess metal genre i don't know there's not really defunct metal genres but uh you kind of know what i mean it's a really popular genre there's tons of bands tons of albums every year that fall into the black metal uh category and uh, i try to keep up with it as much as possible stuff slips through the cracks all the time though there's only so much time in the day there's tons of shit to listen to so yeah let me know down below what i missed but uh let's talk about some albums that i talked about in my top 10 list so um if you want to get more in-depth reviews of these you can check out that video first one i'll talk about is a one-man black metal project out of australia that is fathom age uh, my best description for this album, uh, Autumn's Dawn, Winter's Darkness, is that it sounds like the album cover looks. <laughs> uh, if you want to have a soundtrack to The Witcher or uh, Elder Scrolls or something like that, uh, this is it. If you like summoning or cowed and brood or really atmospheric, epic black metal, this is it. This is a great album. It's almost dark ambient and depressive at times, but... Uh, really triumphant too. Like it's a really, um, really cool journey. It's a pretty long album. If I remember right, it's over 60 minutes, but by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, damn, like that was a really cool listen, man. Um, it takes you places. It gets pretty dark at times, but pretty epic and triumphant. Like I said, so, uh, fathom age, autumn's dawn, winter's darkness, definitely one of my top 10 favorite albums of the year and easily one of my favorite black metal releases. Uh, this guy has released a ton of albums, uh, recently. So check it out. There's a ton to dive into if you like this type of stuff. And, uh, yeah, he's doing a lot of stuff. This is a collector's edition. I got off, uh, his band camp. And uh, it opens up. You got the lyrics in there, which is really cool. Really nice printed CD artwork. And uh, this is number 26 out of 100. There's your track listing. Uh, check it out if you like atmospheric black metal. This would be right up your alley. Now, the next one I'll talk about is an album that uh, is getting a lot of play. A lot of people are talking about it. And uh, for better or for worse, um, it's an album that did make my top 10 list um, because I enjoy it quite a bit. And I listen to it a ton. And um, it's another atmospheric black metal record, which honestly, it's almost more of a melodic death metal record to me. It has more in common with that than black metal. But uh, it has black metal aesthetics and uh, combines Native American influences with black metal and death metal. That is Black Braid with their second album, Black Braid 2. Black Braid is another one-man black metal project, this time out of New York. So they are U.S.-based. And uh, they're getting a ton of play. There was a big article about them, I think, in the New York Times with an interview. And, um, yeah. They're kind of getting the overhyped, overrated label on them. I don't really give a shit. Um, I enjoy the album for what it is. I just want to check out the music, honestly. And uh, the conversation around Black Braid is honestly more tiring uh, than anything. And uh, unfortunately, they're kind of overshadowed. That conversation is kind of overshadowing the, the music itself. There was a controversy at a festival this year, and I'm just like, I don't give a shit, man. Just 
give me more good music. So I'm excited for the follow up to this and see what uh, direction they take it. Uh, because honestly, really everything about this band is pretty impressive. Uh, it's pretty basic black metal, but the production on it is super clean. For an independent release record, it's really impressive how great this is produced. If you like really clean sounding black metal, uh, this is your album. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Uh, if you like the more raw, really, really uh, rough production, black metal, yeah, this is not for you. Um, and they aren't the first acts to take Native American themes and influences and and uh, that those kind of instruments and combine it into black metal. Um, but they're the newest and probably the most popular already, which is crazy. Uh, and they do it really well. Uh, like this album, the atmospheric stuff and the like the interludes, the acoustic parts are probably almost better than the metal parts, uh, which might sound like a diss or um, kind of, you know, taking the piss out of the album. But honestly, I'm not like they're just that good. Um, it's a pretty easy listen too, so it's pretty accessible. And uh, if you've clicked on this video, you probably already know about this album and have formed your opinion on it. But if for some reason you haven't, check it out. Go into it with an open mind. Don't go into it with like, this is going to change the black metal game. Don't let anybody overhype it or overrate it. And honestly, just because something is getting popular too in black metal doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Um, it might just open the genre up to more people and they... Blackbird can become a gateway band for people, which can be a good thing because that can lead them to other artists that they can support. So um, don't automatically assume uh, that it's shit just because uh, newer fans of black metal or metal in general like it. Um, I really dig it, though. Black Braid, Black Braid 2, eh, like I said, it is what it is. And for what it's worth, it's a pretty solid release of the year. And it did make my top 10 list. So I enjoyed it that much. And uh, it shows its head again on my uh, favorite black metal albums of the year. Like I said, I'm excited to see what happens next. And hopefully um, they can kind of quiet the noise and uh, do something uh, more in this vein, but maybe expand the sound even more. Um, this is a really nice uh, gatefold 2LP release. And uh, it's really impressive. The artwork on it is excellent. Really cool album art. Um, I own this and the cassette and the CD. I just bought them all on Bandcamp uh, because that was kind of the most cost-effective way to do it, honestly, instead of just buying the LP. So, uh, yeah, Black Braid, Black Braid 2, really dug it. Excited to see what's next. All righty, the last album I'll talk about that made my top 10 uh, favorite albums of the year is an album that uh, came in at number two on that list. So I really enjoyed it. That's Immortal with War Against All, Norwegian black metal band. I don't really need to do the introduction. If you're watching this video, you probably know who Immortal is. But uh, basically now it's just Demon Oz doing things by himself. I really dig it, man. I enjoyed uh, the previous album, Northern Chaos Gods, as, as well. Um I saw somebody describe this as boring and I'm just like, I don't know what you're expecting. Like immortal just does what they do and they do it well. Like the last three or four albums have been very, very similar. And honestly, a lot of the immortals very, very similar. Uh, like even their early albums, the first three or four albums just had their, that sound uh, really. I mean, their best album is to me is at the winter, which is uh, my favorite album. And that's their most like progressive symphonic album, I guess. But even that's a pretty simplistic album. And uh, if you just want really chunky, heavy guitar riffs that are you can headbang to and really good solos and nice uh, kind of clean black metal production, but still raw at times with some good uh, black metal vocals, like that's Immortal 99% of the time. So uh, if you've liked Immortal, you'll probably like this record. I don't know what people were expecting if they think it was boring. I mean, it's only like 38 minutes long. Like it's not even a drag to listen to. You, you're in and out pretty quick. And usually I listen to it in multiple, uh, multiple times of sitting just because it is so short, which I love. I love short albums in the day and age where everybody's doing everything over 60 minutes, 70 minutes. I love something that doesn't overstay its welcome. So Immortal, War Against All was definitely one of my favorite albums of the year and is definitely one of my favorite black metal releases of the year. All right, next up, I'll talk about a band. I do not own this album. Uh, this album came out 
if I remember right, it came out maybe what a couple weeks ago, like December eighth, fifteenth, twenty twenty three, as I record this here. So um, yeah, that band is Vargrave. The album is The Night Hold. Put the album cover right here. Um, this album is symphonic black metal. If you like Emperor, uh, Demi Borger. This is right up your alley. Uh, Finnish band. If I remember right, this is their third full length album. So not that many. They've only been around since I think 2015. And uh, yeah, if you like symphonic black metal, this album is a really well produced symphonic black metal album uh, coming out of Finland. These guys are pretty impressive uh, for what they do. The production is pretty clean, but not overly clean and shiny. Um, it still retains some of the rawness. The vocals are, are pretty raw compared to like the instruments and the symphonic elements. So that can appeal to black metal fans that do dig the more raw stuff. Um, I do this album. The album cover is really sick too. I will be buying it physically. Um, as soon as the LP comes out, I'll pick it up. So uh, Vargrave with the night hold is definitely one of my favorite uh, releases of uh, 2023. As, as far as black metal goes, I've been listening to this album a ton uh, the last couple of weeks. It's just been on the headphones constantly and I've enjoyed it. So there you go. Uh, this next one I'll talk about is more in the same vein. Also a Finnish band, also symphonic. This is their debut, which is very impressive for a debut album. Super impressive. And that's Moonlight Sorcery uh, with their debut. Let me get this right. Horned Lord of the Thorned Castle. Say that 12 times fast. Um, yeah, this album is really great. Clean production. Um, so if you like that. It's right up your alley. If you don't, you're not going to like this. If you like symphonic black metal, like Emperor, Demi Borger, that type of stuff, this is it. Um, these guys are very good, though. Um, the playing on this is is pretty impressive. Uh, the guitars, uh, the soloing, uh, it's really um, not something you hear a lot in black metal. It is very, very epic. Um, I would say more so almost like Winter Sun, if you're familiar with them. Um, more, But more black metal, honestly. And this is a really cool release. Look at that album art, man. Uh, that gold foil logo. Awesome. There's your track listing. This is a gatefold. It comes with a really cool booklet inside, too, with all your lyrics and liner notes and pictures of the guys. Uh, this is one of my favorite albums of the year, for sure. I forgot about this album, though. I only was reminded about it like a couple weeks ago. And honestly, this would have been in my top 10 had I uh, delayed it a little bit. But uh, I remember when this band released their last EP. It came up on Black Metal Promotions, so shout out to them. That's where I discovered Fathom Age as well on YouTube. It came up and I checked it out and I was like, yeah, I dig this quite a bit. So I tried to file that band name away and I checked out the releases and they still hadn't released their debut album yet. And then it, this came out in September and I just missed it. And uh, so honestly, I've been catching up with it uh, the last week or two. And I absolutely love this album, man. Uh, if you like, like I said, Emperor, Demi Borger, that type of symphonic black metal, this is up your alley. You're missing out if you haven't listened to it. Uh, it's the Moonlight Sorcery with their debut album. Again, look at that album cover. Absolutely sick. Really epic. Like I said, really great playing, soloing that you don't often hear in black metal, uh, which is really cool. Uh, they're kind of doing their own thing with the symphonic thing. And I know that's kind of a dirty word uh, to a lot of black metal fans because that's the most kind of accessible black metal, I would say. That are atmospheric, but like honestly, the genre has been so watered down anyway with all the subgenres of black metal. Like, I don't really care anymore. Like, just like what you like and listen to what you want to listen to. <laughs> like, black metal can be a really great genre with a lot of cool fans, but it can also, honestly be one of the worst and most, uh, um, like intense genres and in intense fandoms about what bands you can and can't listen to and, uh, you know, what subgenres you should listen to and what isn't true black metal and what isn't like that ship has sailed guys. Like we're not in 1994 anymore. Like, you know, even dark throne is not even black metal anymore. So just enjoy what you enjoy. That's all I'll say. Next up. 
We have an Italian band that's been around a long time. Uh, this is actually the first album that I've uh, gotten into uh, from this band. So I'm excited to go back and check out some of their stuff. I'm a huge horror fan. As you can see by the movies here, I have a lot of movies, I have a big movie collection, and I love horror films. And um, I'm a big Goblin fan. They did all the soundtracks to the Dario Argento movies, basically all of them. And um, that's very proggy, synthy based stuff, which I absolutely love too. Um, but this is another aspect of that. Uh, this sounds like horror movie soundtrack, um, like to the nth degree. And that's Mortuary Drape with their new album, Black Mirror. Absolutely sick album cover. Like I said, these guys have been around since the 80s. They're an Italian black metal band. Um, but unlike Goblin, this is more just straight up raw, dark, kind of first wave black metal, like Celtic Frost, uh, Hellhammer, um, Master's Hammer, like maybe like Death SS, or even a little bit of Merciful Fate in there. Um, not the vocals, but just the vibe of it. Um, like Merciful Fate has that vibe, like that horror themed, uh, like this compares well with any type of like, you know, late seventies, early eighties, horror movies, that type of stuff, or sixties, even going back, uh, farther. Like this is what this album sounds like. That's my perfect, like kind of description of it. And it's pretty clean production. Um, but it's great. Like these guys are awesome. And the lineup has changed quite a lot over the years as like most bands in this genre, especially bands that have been around as long as they have. But, um, this is great, man. I'm excited to go back, uh, and check out the rest of their stuff. So mortuary drape with black mirror. This is on a gray vinyl and, uh, it's absolutely, uh, an exquisite album, man. Uh, definitely one of my favorite black metal releases of the year. So, so yeah, check it out if you have never checked them out. And if you're into any type of horror movies, uh, this fits those vibes. And like I said, look at that album cover, man. Really cool logo. Great band name, too. Mortuary Drape. Sick. Uh, anyways, guys, that is some of my favorite releases from the black metal world of the last year, 2023. I'm looking forward to see what comes out in 2024. And like I said, there's so much stuff I haven't listened to. So comment down below if there's anything that like fits these vibes. I like the symphonic stuff. I like atmospheric stuff, kind of epic summoning type stuff. Like that's my two branches, like emperor influenced and summoning influenced. Also like this type of stuff, like Celtic frosty type of stuff, uh, especially with horror themed. Uh, elements right up my alley. So comment down below some releases that I missed, or did you like some of these albums? Did you hate some of these albums? Uh, let me know down below, like, and subscribe all the good YouTube stuff. It helps out the channel. We do a podcast here weekly where we talk about different genres of rock music, classic rock, metal, prog, uh, pop punk, all that type of stuff. We celebrate it all here. So you can stick around and check that out as well but anyways guys i've been ty you've been you i'll see you next time peace